Hi, mystery writers. Welcome to Write a Killer Mystery, where we learn to make a good mystery great. Today, we're going to talk about how to get your readers feeling more using setting. Um, first, I want to thank my supporters on Patreon for their continued support of this video series and my writing. And if you'd like to join us, there's a link in the description below. Okay, so how to make your reader feel like they're there? How, how do you get your reader to feel that that um, moment of being there inside your story? We're going to take a look at at working setting into your story without having just great big long paragraphs of setting, all right? Well, first of all, you know you want your reader to connect with your protagonist sleuth. And one of the best ways to make that connection is to paint a picture of how your protagonist responds to the world around them. And that's the setting, right? Um, your protagonist may be in a big city or crawling through the suburbs or uh, in the morning miss the fog by the ocean. Uh, it doesn't matter. You want your reader to feel like they're there. And the best way to make that connection is by giving your protagonist a response to what's going on around them. All right. So, on the other hand, if you paste in setting to add color to your story, you're d only doing half the job. Um, what you want is to get that connection with your reader. Uh, your reader could visualize the setting when you do that big paste in, uh, but until you give them an emotional response, those setting details are unlikely to elicit feelings and what's worse if you have a long description they may just skip that um, so emotional connection is what you need in your story for your reader because you want them to care you want them to feel that you want them to feel what your protagonist is feeling all right so beginning writers especially often overlook the depth that setting adds to a story. So setting embellishes both the storyline and the characters. So first of all, let's take a look at some of the elements of setting so you have an idea of what that is. Uh, you have many ways to include setting in your story because setting includes such a wide variety of elements. Um, you can use them all to give your reader a sense of the time and place of how the story is going on in that particular scene. And although you may think that setting is the place where story takes place, be sure to include many elements of setting. So you're going to give your reader a sense of where your characters are and how they move through all the elements of setting to achieve their goal, all right? Location, now this is what most people think of as setting. Uh, it's the physical environment where your story happens and what many people consider setting. And it's the country, it's the region, it's the state, it's the town, it's the shoreline, it's the lakeside, it's the inner city, the countryside, the forest trail, wherever your character is and place. Um, that that is part of your setting all right so and also don't forget when you're inside um, you have a kitchen and a bedroom and a patio and a dining room and a hallway and the kids room you really want to get a sense of that inside of of a place so whenever your characters go in your story that provides ample detail to include and then there's the seasons of the year so don't forget this and those seasons have different things going on and they have um, different details as to what's around your character 
um, and there's snow, there's sweating in the sun, there's the springtime flowers, or they may suffer from allergies. All of these things create connections for your reader. And also within the seasons are holidays and festivals, uh, and they vary in the different seasons as well. So you can use those to give a sense of the time and place of your setting. So also this helps your move move your story forward is the time of day. Is it morning? Is it afternoon? Is it evening? Is it lunchtime? Is it after school? All of those different times of the day. Uh, is it dark or is it light depending on what time of day it is? And that and an absence of light, for instance, can intensify the sense of being in the moment in your story. There's also elapsed time, and that's the time it took from the last place you were in your story to the moment that's happening right now in this particular scene um, and what happened in the interim. And also there's the atmosphere, what we think of as weather and the temperature and the lighting. These are all tangible things that your character can experience in your story. So give them, give your readers a sense of all of this so they can feel what's going on in the story. And then there's climate. That's the big, the, the big part of where your story is located um, and the geography and how that impacts your story. Um, is it hot and humid? Is it hot and dry? Is it cold with fierce winds? Uh, is it another beautiful 70 degree Fahrenheit day? All of these things you can add to your story as details to help your reader feel what it's like within your story. There's also the geography. Your story setting may be set far, far away from where you actually live or where your reader is and you want to help them understand the ecosystem of where they are, understand the flora and the fauna. What What is your character seeing? What do they experience? Are there trees? Are there not trees? Um, is it sand everywhere? All that sort of thing. Um, and humankind influences geography as well. So with man-made changes like drains or dams, um, river diversions, bridges, ports, city, cities, uh, all the constructions that your character may encounter in your story. And then last of all in the setting uh, is cultural environment. I know this doesn't feel like setting to many of you, but it is. All right, the social and political influences that surround your characters and especially the other characters that they meet have a big impact on how your reader feels about what's going on in your story. So culture and politics influence your story with conventions about, say, family roles or community involvement or slavery well, because these influence your character sensibilities and those sensibilities influence how your reader feels about your story. Okay, so these are some main attributes of setting and how and the places where your character goes in your in your story and depending on your story you're going to have different setting details. Uh, so you want to make the best use of those and that is through the interaction of your character and the setting. When your sleuth reacts to the setting, you build empathy for your reader. Your, your, your reader feels for the character because your character is feeling something about your setting, all right? Uh, so you want to get your sleuth and your characters to react. So, for instance, if your character is inside somebody's house and everything is spotless and clean and everything's in place and 
There's nothing. How does your character respond to this kind of OCD environment? Does it make them uncomfortable? What is it telling them about the character who lives in this place? You have many ways to play with that. And when you use these details, the setting becomes almost like another character in your story because it influences all the characters' actions in your story. Um, okay, let's see. Let's catch up with myself on what else I wanted to share today. Uh, so you definitely want to add your characters' responses to the setting. And I just go through four different ways you can use those responses to bring your reader into the story and make a stronger connection. So one is the emotional response, and that is uh, how the character feels for what's around them. I mean, is it giving them the creeps? Is, are they scared? Do they feel relaxed? What is it that influences your character? How are they responding to in an emotional way? What is their emotional response to the setting? And whatever you're describing, show your character responding to it. I think that's just the first clue of how to work with your setting. And also you want to use the five senses, all right? So this makes an immediate connection with your reader because they understand all the five senses. So in each scene, include at least two or three of the five senses to help your reader get a sense, as it were, of where your character is in the stories. And so there, you know where your character is seeing, hearing, tasting, um, touching, smelling, all of those. Just keep, keep using those little clues for your reader to give them a sense of where they are in the story. And then the big thing that I mentioned at the beginning uh, is to scatter the, the setting description within the story and even within the scene. So rather than having a big, long uh, narrative description at the beginning, which like tells your reader where they are, just as the scene progresses, add more details about it and give your character reaction to those details. It's going to have a much stronger impact on your reader than just saying it was like this. And, and I think that's the difference between telling and showing. And you're showing by demonstrating your character's reaction to what's around them, all right? And then one other thing about setting, and that is that it can create an overall mood. It can be dark and menacing, or it can be light and vibrant, or it can be full of people and people being happy, or people being miserable. And it's up to you to set the mood with what the character sees around them. So anyway, that is basically what I wanted to talk about today. You want to make that connection between the setting, the character, and the reader. You, your story is going to have a lot more impact, and your reader is going to care more about not just your character, but what happens in the, in the story, because now they're in, emotionally invested in what happens with your protagonist. Okay, that's it. I hope that helps. And uh, I just don't overlook your setting because it can add a lot to your story. All right. Thank you so much.